Hello viewer, welcome back to Artistry. I am your presenter, Taira Swanyeke, and today we continue with joints. We have seen a number of joints, and right now we continue. And before me, I have a number of tools and a portable tool here that we call the cordless drill or the screwer. So it will help me in making the joint that I'm intending to make. Uh, so this is a widening joint that I want to illustrate. We say the bat joint can be used as either a framing joint or an angle joint to form an angle. We can use it as well to make uh, the length longer, uh, thus using it as a, as a lengthening joint. Then we can as well use it as a widening joint. So the widening joint is normally uh, the, the most common because we want to make boards wider. And for us to have a stable board, we split the pieces into uh, uh, narrow pieces and then we join them. That is to ensure that the, the warping effect yeah, balances the board across. So that once we have these uh, annual rings uh, of the of the piece running this way for this one, then we interchange with the other one. So that if one wants to cap on this side, then the other one caps opposite. That that's making the board stronger. So I have two pieces of wood here, which I want to join, and I want to use the dowels. The dowels are going to look like this. They are circular or round in shape in the cross section. Then the diameter is well determined. So the diameter of my dowels uh, is 10 millimeters. So I'll use a drill bit, 10 millimeters also, to drill. So we say the most important uh, point or step in joinery is marking out. So I have the marking gauge, I have the tape measure, I have my pencil, and I have the tri-square. They are going to help me to mark, and then I use the power tool to drill. Then from there, we just put together the joint. So I'll determine my, my, the points at which I want to put the, the dowels. So my whole piece is about 175 millimeters. So uh, about a third of that will be around 58 or thereabout. So I'll mark. 58 millimeters, 58 millimeters is around there. Then from the other side as well, 58 millimeters, 58 millimeters. Then I'll use the square to cross or to put the, the marks across. Use the face as well. I mark, so I do the same. Now, to avoid a lot of uh, duplication, I can just uh, mark this one here, mark this one here, then bring my piece, the other piece, and mark on the same spot here. Can also make the spot here. It's more accurate than measuring because, as you can see, one is longer than the other. So, if I say I measure, then I may mess up. So. If we have so many pieces that we are marking, then we arrange them here. We mark these two. We arrange all of them there. The last one there and the last one here. We put all the others in the middle, then get a straight edge. We mark. That way we achieve uh, a truly uh, accurate measurements. Then I transfer this one with the tri-square and as well, I transfer the other line with a tri-square. Then I use the marking gauge. The marking gauge, I'll measure half of this thickness. This thickness is 30 millimeters. So I measure half of it, 15 millimeters. I put a dot. And then I, put, I measure I put the line with my marking gauge. So with my marking gauge, I'll transfer only at that point and this other point. 
and as well do so on this uh, piece using the face always the face and the face so i use the face on that line and also the face here now i have the point where i'm going to start off my hole with the cordless drill so i'll clamp it make sure i am working safely and then i will drill with a cordless drill I'll drill and then do so also on the other piece. Then I'll put my doubles hammer them in and then the one as well so i'll judge if they, will, they are too long or if they are appropriate if i think they are too long then i have my my bench hook i'll cut them a little bit Then I'm sure, I am sure now, they will fit into it. And I'll put them in. Sorry. And here is my doubled joint. So it's a widening joint. It cannot come out. Remember, we also use glue on it. So right now I have not glued it, but you can see it is tight. It is tight. So if I glue it now, it will be much tight. So this is a widening joint and it is doubled. We have other techniques also of strengthening the butt joint. Right now, you can see how tight it is and it is not glued. So if I apply glue now, it will be so tight. So that is the use of the dowels where widening joint is, uh, is concerned. We have other techniques as well of, uh, of putting together boards or widening the boards. And before me here, I have the, the, the grooved piece. So as you can see, that piece has a groove. Then we have a loose feather on it. The loose feather may be made of plywood or uh, such strong material. Then once you put it together, it forms a joint. It's also a widening joint and it's very tight once you glue it. So you can vary your options where you want to use the bat joint. You can as well use the loose feather joint and you can as well use the riveted joint. The riveted joint we as well have a ribbit so one side will have the ribbit the other side will have also a ribbit and then it will be well done so the groove the groove here the groove here is made using the plow plane the plow plane is a special purpose tool it is used for for making grooves so it will have a blade to have a blade right now it has a three millimeter blade so as you can see, uh, if you want to put the groove, and you just clamp your piece on the, on, the, on the bench vise. And then you guide it with the fence, the fence on this side, and then you put the groove. So right now I have used the plow plane to make the groove. <laughs> 
we have a groove now I'll fit the loose feather and fit the other piece as well so we have those many options where widening joints are concerned and for now uh, we'll stop at that we'll get a, we'll go to for a short break and then we'll be back to see another kind of a joint stay tuned <laughs>